Hi, this is Les Hasbargan. This tutorial shows you how to move uh, data that you have extracted from a GIS, such as Global Mapper, um, with contacts along a geologic cross section line. So we've already exported those to a text file, CSV file actually, comma separated values. And so we'll just go and open up that file and we'll move that data into a spreadsheet where we can start drawing that data onto this topographic profile here. So um, the data uh, looks like this and if I can move that into the field of view um, here we have easting northing elevation XY's that's what it calls it in Global Mapper. And so we want this data set right here. Copy that, paste that right into here. <coughs> and now we're ready to start filling out uh, the part of the spreadsheet that's going to allow us at each and every point of where it crosses this cross section line to draw a line into the subsurface. So uh, the first thing we need is to actually isolate our dips here for each one of these features. And notice that this is actually the south end, this is the north end. So if we have a feature that's dipping north, it's going to be dipping in this direction. So we need a convention that allows us to actually find uh, the angle of dip for any dip that is this direction, vertical, and then back that direction. So if we set 0 equal to horizontal, and then as you increase, you will be dipping down, so down to 90. And then uh, over here, it would go past 90 on up to 180. Uh, so that should work for us, and uh, let's give it a go here. So. Twenty. This is going to be a vertical syncline. We'll just leave the fault as vertical. As I recall, I couldn't measure it in the field. Um, so these are contacts there, and those are probably going to have the same uh, strikes and dips as other strike dip measurements that I had around it. For now, I'm not sure what those are. Um, I will just go ahead and put in fake numbers for now. Um, so we have the dip angle which is going to allow us to draw a line into the subsurface and now we need to actually de decide how long that line should be. So I would suggest looking at the scale and if you know we're looking at roughly a thousand meters there maybe a tenth of that uh, to start. So I'll just fill that down 100 100 meter line lengths. Okay, so we have an angle and uh, a length, and now we need to know where to start. So we need to go along here and find out what distance we are from the south end of the line. So that distance is going to be equal to the distance formula, and we use our coordinates. So it's going to be easting minus and this is going to be R2C1. You have to fix this as an absolute reference. Now we do the same for the northing. And actually, I don't want to click that. That would make that a relative reference. We want that to be R2C2. We have to square that difference. And then we have to take the square root of the sum. And if I did that correctly, we should get a number. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't need all of those decimals. And so now, double click this. Yep, it's operating on that point, and it's using that starting point. So all of these now have a distance from a starting distance from the south end of the line. Well, that's just going to be our starting plotting coordinate for our line, so we'll just set that equal to that. Copy that down, and I will pause and show you the rest.